from this section we are actually starting with the process of digestion and we will start with carbohydrate digestion. we need to understand in which form is carbohydrate normally consumed in the food. That food we eat contains carbohydrate in the form of disaccharides. Disaccharides like sucrose, lactose, etc. And there are polysaccharides like starch, glycogen and cellulose which we call roughage. This cellulose is not digested or we can say cellulose cannot be digested by any animal on its own. Its digestion is done with the help of enzyme called cellulase which is uh, synthesized by certain microbes. So cellulose digestion is a special type of digestion which we will discuss by the end of uh, this part. So we consume it and we call it roughage but we cannot digest it. So this is the main uh, form or these are the main forms in which carbohydrate is normally consumed. We need to break down the disaccharides into monosaccharides as well as the polysaccharides into monosaccharides that is glucose or fructose or simple sugars. If we consume monosaccharide like glucose, we don't have to digest it because that is the smallest unit. Digestion basically means breakdown of complex organic substances or molecules into simpler substances which can be absorbed. So, glucose need not be digested, disaccharides and polysaccharides would be digested. And we would study this process of digestion according to the location. So, the first place where the food goes is buccal cavity. In buccal cavity, starch, that is polysaccharide we are talking about is acted upon by the enzyme that is salivary amylase which is also known as tylen. The pH at which this reaction takes place is 6.8 because that is the pH of saliva which is slightly acidic. 7 is neutral, it is slightly less than 7 and that is why it is slightly acidic and chloride ions are essential for the activation of this enzyme. After the action of enzyme on starch, it is a part of it is broken down into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. These are smaller dextrins. Now, how much of starch actually gets digested with the help of this enzyme? We need to understand a simple thing that when we put the food in our mouth, a buccal cavity, we start chewing it. Chewing is mechanical digestion. An action of enzyme starts the chemical process or chemical digestion. So here we can write that chewing is considered as mechanical digestion and enzymatic action is chemical digestion. We hardly keep that food in our mouth for a minute. Most of the times it is less than that and when we are chewing it, this amylase is actually getting mixed with the starch. If just what is happening in the buccal cavity is talked of, hardly 3% of starch would get digested in our buccal cavity. That too, if we chew it properly for a significant amount of time. But that doesn't happen. Immediately, we swallow it. The food that is chewed, mixed with saliva, and it is a ball-like soft material which gets swallowed is known as bolus. 
So here, bolus is that ball-like soft food. Ball-like soft food after chewing, which we actually swallow. Once we swallow it, what all is going in? The complete food plus the enzyme. So the action of this enzyme continues on the bolus when it is passing through the esophagus and even when it reaches the stomach. But in stomach, the pH is highly acidic and we know all enzymes have their optimum pH. So their action is maximum at that pH. When it reaches the acidic pH, its action is slowed down, but it still keeps working. So here we will write the complete percentage. About 30% of starch is digested by salivary amylase. But here we need to specify that about 3% in buccal cavity and remaining 27% in stomach. Again, a quick recap of what is happening is, this is the main form or these are the main forms of carbohydrate in which uh, we take them or they are present in our food. In buccal cavity, there is a carbohydrate digesting enzyme called salivary amylase. The pH at which it works is 6.8, which is its optimum pH in presence of chloride ions. But when we are chewing the food, we keep it in our buccal cavity for a very short period of time. So during that short period, this amylase is able to break down only 3% of carbohydrate or starch. But when we swallow it in the form of bolus, the action of salivary amylase continues. So when the bolus is passing through the esophagus or when it reaches in the stomach, the enzyme is still working on that though the action of enzyme is less because now it is not working at its optimum pH. So overall, this salivary amylase is able to digest 30% of the starch, some in buccal cavity and some in the stomach part. After we swallow this bolus, it reaches the next location of our alimentary canal. In esophagus, there is no digestion. So the next location is stomach. In stomach, we have seen the composition of gastric juice. It has protein digesting enzyme and a mild lipase. There is no carbohydrate digesting enzyme. So here we need to specify that there is no carbohydrate digestion as gastric juice has no amylase. There is no amylase, no carbohydrate digestive enzyme. The third location, now this food. The food which comes from the stomach into the intestine, it is acidic. And after we study all the digestions that is of proteins and fats and everything else, we would see that the food which is coming from stomach to the duodenum is partially digested. Some proteins would get digested, some carbohydrate would get digested and negligible fat. So here we add one term that is chine or chine. It is partially digested acidic food. This is partially digested acidic food. And this is the food which comes into the next location where digestion is going to take place. That is pan, sorry, duodenum. So when we swallow the ball-like soft food which is swallowed is called bolus. The partially digested food which goes from stomach to the duodenum is known as Chine. This is partially digested and it is acidic because of hydrochloric acid which is present in the stomach region or in the gastric juice. 
Now the food has reached duodenum. In duodenum, there are three juices which are poured. Bile is also poured, pancreatic juice is also there and intestinal juice. In the previous video, we saw the composition of all these juices. So now the starch which reaches, 30% of the starch got digested. So approximately 70% of the starch reaches the duodenum. It is acted upon by pancreatic amylase. Pancreatic amylase acts on this starch, but here the pH is basic and due to these three juices. So pH is 8.6 to 8.8. And this and this basic pH is due to the bicarbonate ions mainly which is which are produced in or present in bile. So in presence of enzyme at this optimum pH the remaining starch gets digested into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. And now there are enzymes which are in the intestinal juice which act on this. So maltose. Whether this maltose is produced here or from here or we have taken it here in the form of a disaccharide. This is acted upon by maltase pH is again same 8.6 to 8.8 that means it is also working in basic pH. Maltose is a disaccharide and it breaks into glucose and glucose. Similarly, sucrose, lactose, isomaltose, Limit dextrins, they are also acted upon by various enzymes. Sucrose is acted upon by sucrase, lactose by lactase, isomaltose by isomaltase, and limit dextrin by limit dextrinase. And they are broken down into simpler sugars like sucrose is broken down into glucose and fructose. Lactose is broken down into glucose and galactose. Isomaltose is broken down into glucose and glucose. And limit dextrins are also broken down into glucose. That means here the carbohydrates are being broken down into the simplest sugars that is monosaccharides and as we can see the most common monosaccharide that we get is glucose. About 80% of monosaccharides that we obtain due to this process is glucose. There is fructose also, galactose also. So here what has happened is all that starch which enters into the duodenum part. 30% got digested here, 70% uh, enters into duodenum. Now it is acted upon by all these enzymes and we get all these monosaccharides. So we have seen the digestion of starch so far. In the next part, we will talk about cellulose digestion also.